In the last class, I left off discussing Savulescu's arguments in favor of genetic enhancement. So remember, he has three major arguments uh, in favor of genetic enhancement. First, he thinks that we wouldn't be doing the best for our children if we didn't genetically enhance them because we would be depriving them of certain uh, benefits and opportunities. Second, he thinks there's no intrinsic difference, there's no morally significant difference between intervening in the child's environment and more direct biological interventions on the child. And third, he thinks there's no deep moral difference between uh, genetic therapy and genetic enhancement. So those are Savulescu's arguments in favor of the permissibility, the advisability of genetic enhancement. Well, so the next question is this. If enhancement is not inherently objectionable, then who is to decide uh, whether to use it or uh, how to use it? Historically, champions of eugenics policies have often thought that the, agent, that the agency that should be responsible for directing eugenics policy should be the state. Savulescu, however, thinks that a more defensible view uh, would be a liberal conception of eugenics. That is one where decisions about which traits to enhance are going to be made by individuals, perhaps in particular by individual parents. So a liberal state, as Savulescu is thinking about it, is one that permits liberty quite generally, except where it's going to cause harm to others or lead to significant injustice or where it may induce people to take unnecessary or unreasonable risks. So a policy of liberal eugenics would be one that broadly permits individual freedom in deciding which traits to enhance um, within those kinds of limits. That is, there's maybe safety restrictions, there may need to be limitations uh, in place so that enhancements don't cause harm to others. So for example, if a uh, side effect of an enhancement was greatly increasing aggression, that might be problematic because it would pose harm to others. More subtly, there may be reasons to not permit interventions on, uh, on the germline cells, that is the cells that would be heritable from one generation to another, as opposed to the somatic cells that um, that uh, make up your body, but which aren't going to be passed on to the next generation. So you might be more comfortable um, uh, making enhancements on cells that aren't heritable, because you know, then any sort of um, unforeseen uh, risks wouldn't be passed on uh, to future generations. Savulescu thinks there may also be cause to have uh, restrictions based on concerns about justice, uh, about unequal access. So in this respect, Savulescu is acknowledging the kind of concern that Glannon has about genetic enhancement, but whereas Glannon tends to think that this is an argument against permitting genetic enhancements in general, Savulescu thinks this is just a reason to implement certain kinds of regulations to try to limit any um, problems of justice that might uh, be caused. Of course, an obvious concern about this uh, conception of a liberal eugenics policy is that it may be that it's actually rare that a person can perform genetic enhancements um, on themselves. That is, it may primarily be embryos or fetuses who are going to be the best candidates for some kind of genetic intervention because they're the ones whose development still lies in the future that their genes are going to help uh, govern. So that raises the question, does an irreversible enhancement uh, limit the child's future autonomy? Is this a way of, does, does such an enhancement um, lock a child into a particular kind of future? Um, on the other hand, I mean, you might look at it 
uh, from the from the other side, you might think, well, maybe enhancements, um, even if they are irreversible, will actually increase the child's autonomy as long as the enhancements are providing the child with more opportunities than uh, the enhancement takes away. Because we're talking uh, often about, about genetic interventions on developing fetuses or children rather than on adults, Savalescu thinks that in general, if it's possible to delay a um, genetic enhancement, then that's what you ought to do. Um, that if you can wait until the child is old enough to choose for themselves, that will often be the better choice. But in many cases, Savalescu acknowledges such an intervention may not be able to be delayed. In that case, uh, the decision should ordinarily be left to the parents, according to Savalescu, um, according to a principle of procreative liberty and autonomy. And what he means by that is that we should recognize parents generally to have the right or freedom to choose um, when to have children, how many children to have, and here's the uh, innovative part, arguably, he thinks, what kinds of children to have. So we're familiar with ideas of procreative uh, autonomy when we're thinking about abortion um, or any other way of controlling one's reproduction, like using contraceptives, for example. You might think that this, uh, the freedom to use those, uh, to, to avail oneself of those kinds of practices are based on the freedom to choose when to have children and how many children to have. Savalescu thinks that part and parcel of that same kind of freedom is a right to be able to make one's own decision about what kinds of children to have. And this is, of course, worth reflecting on as to whether you think that's really, whether all those things really hang together. Um, do people have the same kind of right to decide what kind of children to have as they have a right as to uh, how many children to have or when to have children? What might Savalescu say if we express some skepticism about whether this principle of procreative autonomy should also cover genetic enhancement? He has, a, uh, two, he has two main considerations in support of that idea. First, he thinks that uh, parents have interests in rearing children that are going to be rewarding for them to rear. So parents devote lots of time, money, and energy to rearing their children. And he thinks uh, it'd be unfortunate if you um, invest all of that time and energy into rearing your children. And it turns out that your children um, uh, don't have enough similar interests or abilities um, as you do to make that as rewarding of an experience as it could be. So because um, parents are putting so much into their children, it would be a good thing, he thinks, for them to be able to um, ensure that the children that they're raising are the kind of children who uh, would, again, be rewarding for them to raise. The other consideration in favor of, um, of putting the responsibility of making enhancement decisions in the hands of parents is uh, that it's a good thing to have experiments in reproduction. So here, Savalescu is borrowing an idea of John Stuart Mill's. Mill thought that it was a good thing for there to be liberty um, in the ways that we live our lives because people will make different kinds of decisions about lifestyle and we can think about these, uh, these individual decisions as being different experiments in living. Uh, people might discover new ways 
of leading a good human life that, uh, that people weren't really aware of before. And the only way of making these new discoveries, or the best way of making these discoveries, is to permit uh, lots of little experiments to be ongoing at the same time. Maybe lots of ways of life won't turn out uh, so beneficial, but every once in a while someone will discover some new good ways of living, and we all benefit when someone discovers a new way of life uh, that uh, is rewarding. So similarly, Savalescu thinks that it could be good to have uh, lots of individual decisions about what sorts of traits to enhance. Maybe all of these ideas aren't going to be um, that good of ideas, but some will. Some people will hit upon really good enhancements or really good combinations of enhancements. And we'll all stand to benefit uh, from those discoveries when people figure out which sort of enhancements really work well. So this would be, this is a benefit that would be lost to you if you had a centralized state-run eugenics policy where uh, you were putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, if you've got lots of individual decisions, the thought is you're going to make discoveries more quickly about what kinds of enhancements really are beneficial. Now, just because there's going to be uh, freedom on the part of the parents to make decisions about what kinds of enhancements to, uh, to seek for their own children, again, that doesn't mean there's going to be no limits to this parental autonomy. The enhancements that would be permitted would have to be beneficial to the child according to some plausible account of well-being. Maybe people have some different ideas about uh, what is a good life or what kinds of um, abilities are most valuable, but Savalescu assumes that there's going to be a range of views that even if it's not our preferred view, we could recognize as a reasonable or plausible conception of well-being. Um, so, for example, I may value intellectual achievement more than I value athletic performance. Um, so maybe I would more want to enhance my children intellectually than I would want to enhance them athletically. But I could still recognize that there's a plausible picture of well-being that would prioritize athletic abilities. Um, the other, uh, the other requirement that Savalescu insists on is that the enhancements have to be consistent with the child's development of autonomy and with a reasonable range of future life plans. So that means a couple of things. Um, first, you, know, you can't turn your child into a robot. You can't take away their free will, as it were. You have to, um, whatever enhancements um, you attempt to um, produce have to be uh, consistent with the child's ability to reason for himself about um, you know, what's worthwhile in life and so on. Uh, and the, the other bit of that, the other half of that requirement, is that the enhancements have to be consistent with a reasonable range of future life plans. So there would be a problem if you designed your child's enhancements so that only one kind of life was open to them. So you had essentially created um, someone who would be the perfect lawyer. Um, but they would, they would not be very good at anything else. So they would be um, an excellent lawyer or maybe they would be an excellent uh, football player. Uh, but you know, they wouldn't there's nothing else that they would be very good at. So Savalescu thinks there would be something wrong with those kinds of enhancements as well, because those enhancements would be attempting to lock the child into a particular way of life. And so those would be depriving the child of, um, 
of autonomy and future opportunities. So here's the question uh, for Savalescu's view that I want to leave you with, which is how much parental autonomy can Savalescu really permit? So here's a quotation uh, from, uh, from, a, from one point in the paper. Savalescu tells us, once technology affords us the power to enhance our own and our children's lives, to fail to do so would be to be responsible for the consequences. To fail to treat our children's diseases is to wrong them. To fail to improve their physical, musical, psychological, and other capacities is to wrong them just as it would be to harm them if we gave them a toxic substance that stunted or reduced these capacities. Well, I think you, know, you can probably see uh, the objection here. The objection is, look, parents don't have a legal right to decide to refrain from treating their children's illnesses. They don't have a legal right to decide to intentionally stunt their children's growth. Uh, these would be acts of child abuse. So if enhancement is really morally no different than treating disease, and parents aren't free to not treat their children's disease, then why should parents be free not to enhance? It looks like the logic of that argument would lead you to believe that parents have a moral, perhaps a legal duty to enhance their children, um, not autonomy to make their own decisions about enhancement. So I'll kind of leave that to you to think about whether Savulescu has a good uh, response to that objection. Um, just to, uh, just one idea that you might think about is maybe Savulescu is thinking that there's, there's going to be more liberty in making decisions about uh, how we enhance than there is in how we treat diseases because um, our, our notions about uh, what are good traits that kind of go beyond the uh, threshold of health are more various than our ideas about what does good health consist in. Uh, so maybe that's going to be playing some role as to why parents would have more autonomy to make decisions about, um, about enhancements than they are about treating disease. Um, in any case, that's something uh, to think about.